time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> Let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Ladies and gentlemen, and we have a nice surprise tonight, a guest panelist who is one of the most endearing and charming comedians on Broadway, the Marion Sam of Little Abner, W.K. Like to meet one of the most charming personalities in show business today, a really gracious lady, Miss Arlene Francis. Well, that was very nice, Debbie. Jubilation to you, And now our publisher panelist, and very good friend, Mr. Bennett Sir. And our title moderator, that suave, articulate, immaculately groomed John Charles Daly. Wait till my wife hears I'm suave. Oh, boy. <laughs> That'll be it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we're up to our old tricks. We have some very interesting occupations. We have Stubby K as a guest on the panel. We trust that we'll stick Stubby K and the rest of the panel with the occupations. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before our panel a little bit later in the show, but now it is time to meet our first contestant. So will you come in and sign in, please? F. Newton. F. Newton Gifford, is that right? Uh, Newton, if I may, where are you from? Bakersfield, California, John. Bakersfield, California. Oh, that's wonderful country out there. Nice to have you here in the East. I trust you get to like it after you've been here for a while. I want you just to meet the panel very informally. That is the panel. And that's Mr. Gifford. Yeah, <laughs> and, that is, <laughs> and that's the panel. Well, let's go. I know that uh, <clears throat> you're all ready to uh, proceed with this. I think you know how we keep the score, do you not? Yes, I do, John. All right, fine. Then let's suppose we let everybody here and those who are at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, trying to be helpful, we will tell you that our guest is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Salaried? And I was just going to ask him if he played football. That wouldn't be nice. <laughs> would um, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Is it in something other than the educational field? Mm, yes. Uh, is your appearance of any assistance to you in your work? No, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't think so. One down and nine to go, Mr. K. I don't care about his appearance being connected with his work. I wish I had it. <laughs> He's built the way I'd like to look. Uh, do you deal in, in services? Uh, yes, I do. Uh-huh. And do you, uh, do you give these services to both men and women? Yes. Well. <laughs> uh-huh. Would I come to you for these services? Yes. I see. I and would say this, Debbie, so you're not confused. Uh, if you had a desire to utilize our guest services, you would have to take the initiative to go and receive them. I see. Do you deal with both men and women? You mean, to the de is, is his service available to both men and women? You're so right, John. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Uh huh. Do you do uh, do you deal these services uh, uh, indoors mostly? No. That's no. two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do you ever touch the people that you um, that may come to you? 
Four services? Yes. Well, uh, yes, let me see. <laughs> I will say this, that while he is dispensing his services, it is perhaps to be described as more than likely that he will come in actual physical contact with some of the people, yes. Thank you, John. Is there anything athletic about what you do? Yes. Well, I should think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bennett wants me to ask you if you're all star of the New York Giants, but I don't think I ought to ask you that. <laughs> well, you want to ask that, Arlene? <laughs> well, um, is football in your line at all? Yes. Well, Bennett, it's not Red Grange. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you play pro football? Yes. From Bakersfield, he's all-star with the New York Giants, are you? Just a country boy. <laughs> <laughs> are you all-star with the New York Giants? He's a fullback. Fullback, halfback, quarterback. Uh, you got halfback. a lovely back. I don't care what condition <laughs> it's in. <laughs> Bennett kept the mitt, and I ought to he find did. you. There wasn't any call for a conference now, Bennett, Wendy, sir. you've got the star of the Giants here. If we didn't know him, we'd be... My son stupid. would raise such huh? cane with me. It's, I'm Actually, glad that it's Bennett unbelievable. It's, it's Frank Gifford, not Newton. Newton is his middle name. We uh -huh. thought we'd intrigue That's you with that one. <laughs> but it's a, you know, a most remarkable performance, Frank. I hope this doesn't embarrass you. In today's game, he ran for two touchdowns. He passed for one more, and he caught a pass for the last one. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and this is how the Washington Redskins went home <laughs> pale and somewhat shaken. Miss Gilgallon? Stubby and I both thought football the minute he walked out, and then we proceeded to dismiss it instantly. <laughs> well, I, I think that Newton threw me. Well, that's what, Stubby, we were hoping Newton would throw you. And, it's, and uh, if he can throw me, it's a good throw. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that. That was sir. Newton's theory. I wasn't going to Possibly you, Stubby, in the middle of our line, he looks like a fine-sized man for a tackle. <laughs> I, got, I got news for you. With me, you'll only need two other guys in that line. <laughs> he looked like a fine man for a tackle is right. I wish we could get him up there and you'd tackle him. Now, I want to say one thing, because I think the record should be complete on Frank. In 1952, you were named All-American when you were with the USC, right? That's right, John. I don't know why it is, it, just a very quick note, but it seems to me that a lot of our really great athletes now are coming out of the West. Do you suppose if I moved West, I could become... No, that's a silly question. <laughs> well, Frank, it's wonderful to have had you with us. We'll flip all these anyway, because it's so much fun to have had you, and I'm sorry we didn't give him more trouble, and it's that Bennett surf. <laughs> we'll get him. Thanks well, thank very, you very much, much for being yeah. our guest. Wonderful to have you. The trouble with that Bennett surf is he's associating with the FBI now, see. That's it. Bennett's published a book, and, and uh, if I may, and I trust that uh, you will give me the minute to do it. Bennett's published a book, and I should uh, like to talk about it. It's the FBI story, and it's the kind of book that needs, has, really should have been written a long time ago. Don Whitehead and Pulitzer Prize winner wrote it, and there's some of the most fascinating contemporary history in it that you could ever get your eyes on. But still, Bennett knows the FBI, so I got to behave myself. J. Edgar Hoover will be all over me like a tent. Let's see what we can do with another challenger now. Panel, I'm disappointed in you. You're too good. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Maxine. Maxine Rosen. Is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Rosen, Mrs. Rosen, where are you from? Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan, fine. There is the, uh, the panel there, with just a brief hello, and if you come over here, please, and sit down. Are you familiar with our scoring system? Yes, I am. Fine, and then it's that everybody at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, once again, Mrs. Rosen is salaried. And since you've become the sleuth to end all sleuths, why don't you start it off, Bennett, sir? Mrs. Rosen, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes, there is. 
Is it a product that Detroit is particularly noted for? No. That's one dollar and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it something that both men and women would have occasion to buy? Yes. Is it ever found in the home? Yes. Is it smaller than a grand piano? Yes. Is it uh, smaller than a table radio? Yes. Dorothy, would you please ask if it's smaller than a bread box, because people are writing and wanting to know what happened oh. to the bread box. All right, in honor of Steve Allen. Uh, is it smaller than a bread box? Yes, it's smaller than oh, a bread box. Oh, good. Uh, is it smaller than a loaf of bread? Yes. So you could hold it in your hand? Yes. Uh, would you be likely to? I mean, do people, is this something people usually take from one place to another? They could. It isn't yes. something that just lies there all the time like a cigarette no. box. No, I would say there are circumstances under which, at least I'm told, this is held in the hand and used, you know, manually. This does not necessarily mean that all the time it is used. <laughs> is, there, is there something enjoyable about this? Is there something that's enjoyable about this? Uh-huh. Yes. Sometimes. Oh, yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> Does this have a distinctive odor or taste? No. Now, it might have, but it, it isn't uh, <laughs> noted for these things. <laughs> Two down of eight to go, Mr. K. Would I use this product? Yes. If you could, I think you, yes. <laughs> well, uh, would it improve me in any way? Would it make me, uh... Would it... <laughs> How can they look so clean and laugh so dirty? <laughs> would it improve you in any way? If I did use it, would it improve my appearance? Your appearance. Thank you very much. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Preston. Is it a useful product? Yes. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really doubt it personally, but we've got to do this the technical way. Let me have a small conference. John doesn't know whether it's useful. I'm pretty surprised. Arlie, only because I'm afraid it would mislead you if no, we it agreed. No, it won't. It won't mislead me, John. <laughs> no, John, it won't mislead me. I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> Six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Rosen, is this a, a product that might be used more around the Yuletide holidays and other times of the year? Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Does it grow? Is it something that grows? Yes. Is it plant life? Yes. Is it something you hold on the mistletoe? Yes. Now, what does Mrs. Rosen do with mistletoe? She kisses under it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would think she possibly raises mistletoe. No, no, not raises it. That makes it five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. She sells it. Sells it is right. all figured out, Mrs. Rosen. The trouble here was we should have done this last June, and that uh, prying mind over there wouldn't be thinking about the season. But we did pretty well anyway. We gave him a little bit of trouble. English, there's an English publisher in the audience named Mr. Longmans who said, watch out, there'll be something about Christmas tonight. So you, he's <laughs> what, the one you should... because Christmas get. is coming? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we get for being obvious. That's why it should have been June. <laughs> yes, it should have been June. But we hope you had fun. It was Thank nice you. to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Tonight. Tonight's and now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel have been blindfolded. Stubby Cade's been electrocuted, I think. <laughs> but anyway, are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Oh, right. yes, sir. Will, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with Arlene Francis. Well, are you someone who makes appearances in show business? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Serf? Muffled ones. Do, do you have a, a particular penchant for getting along with children? I would say 
say this yes, to no. I would I would say this to be fair. Yes and no. But it, 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 it's That's a, uh, it's a very helpful answer. A Jerry. very helpful answer, yes. Miss Gilgallan? Well, I think I'm reading Bennett's mind, so I'll pursue it a little further. Uh, have you made extensive tours for the benefit of little children? Well, this is a tough one because this gets us back into yes and no. Well, that's Our what I wanted. Has an, <laughs> you want that? Yes. All right, you got it. <laughs> well, what is it? Yes and no. <laughs> Oh, yes, you can if there's no other way to answer it, Bennett. Well, without revealing too much. Mr. Sure. K? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was thinking about the mask. <laughs> uh, are you in the motion picture field? No. <laughs> <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you a comedian? Yes. Mr. Sir? Shy one. Uh, do, do, is most of your comedy done for television? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you currently appearing in anything on the New York stage? No. That's two down of eight to go, Mr. K. Are you English? <laughs> Three, three <laughs> out of seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you appear regularly on a television program? No. <laughs> Four out of six to go, Mr. Serp. Well, have you ever appeared regularly on a television program? Yes. Miss Gilgallan? Are you a musician? <laughs> no. Five out of five to go, <laughs> Mr. K. Are you at present appearing in a nightclub in New York? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. He used to have a television show. He lost his set. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, work as a single comedian rather than with a partner? I don't mean are you married or single. I mean, <laughs> do you perform without aid of a... You are a man, aren't you? Did we? That must be. Arlene, this is going Yes, to... no. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. In other words, our guest does work singly sometimes, and other times he may work with others. Mr. Sir. Well, well, I didn't really mean that. I didn't make myself clear. I meant, would his name be alone over a show as a star rather than with somebody else? Yes, That's Mr. Sir. Thank you. Just playing out a hunch, not because of any voice I recognize, were you, for many years, just about the tops in television comics? And probably still are. I didn't mean that you aren't today, but I mean when you appear. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to get hit. <laughs> I think I will answer that question because it might embarrass. Yes, definitely. Miss Kilgallen. Oh. Are you Uncle Milty? Uncle Milty it is. I'm not going to say too much. I, I, you know, stopping uh, me, a burl, from saying something, I'm going, no, you know. <laughs> I would like to just say that, uh, that uh, it had to be served. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, it's a great pleasure, really, to be here, and I, uh, I want you to know that uh, when you said, am I on or I'm off, I'm taking a, you know, a hiatus sort of a, a rest. Well, what are your plans? No, the no, plan, well, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Europe, back to Paris, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Burl and myself are going to live over there for nine months. I'm going to uh, film my next year's show, I'm coming back next year, starting in September, what with a, a film show, a half-hour adventure, comedy adventure, a la foreign Intrigue, oh, incidentally, with you're the... You're going to wear a trench coat, oh boy. I'm wearing a trench coat, yes. You are. And is it raining? Is he English? No. And, uh, 
Uh, African. African. No, it's uh, going to be, uh, it's done with uh, Sheldon Reynolds, produced and directed oh, by yeah. Sheldon Reynolds. And uh, I know you haven't got too much time, but uh, while, uh, while I, uh, I'm here, I would just like to say that this is the first time I've been back on your show in about so many years, but you're all invited. John, the ladies, Miss Francis, Miss Kilgallen, Sal, stay, it's, it's, uh, Kay, and you don't have to come, Bennett. Uh, no, you're all invited. I'm, I'm going to open uh, December 18th at the Town and Country Club in Brooklyn, and all get your passports and your visas. And, uh, of course, it's a distance, but uh, we're going to have a show over there starting December 18th through the uh, New Year's Eve, and you're all invited. Be my oh. guest, but bring money. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if we can't trip you up. Let's see what you can do with the final challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Bingo. That's it. Right there, please. Oh, we got another piece, I'm sure. There. That's it. Florence H. Poole. Is that right? Chatham, Chatham, Ontario. Ontario. And is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Yes. Poole, the panel, and we have about three minutes, so would you come over here, please, and sit down? <laughs> and I wonder if, coming from Canada, you, you know our scoring system, yes, do you? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll get it back to zero, and let's let everybody at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, you have uh, just about three minutes to see if you can find out what it is that Mrs. Poole's line is, and we'll tell you she's salaried and begin with Stubby K. Is there a product involved in your work? No, sir. No product. There is not a product involved in the work in our usual terms of reference. This is not to say that there isn't a contact with some physical thing. You know, Miss Francis, uh -huh. that's one down and nine to go. Uh, Mrs. Poole, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Surf. You do not work for a profit-making no. organization. Have you got a job with some government connection? Yes. yes. Would it be the Canadian government? The Canadian big government, you mean? Yes. Yes. That'll make it three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a local government in one of the yes. provinces? Yes. Uh, is it an executive post? Yes. It could be, yes. I, <coughs> yeah, I guess it's executive, yeah. You mean, John, it has something to do with execution? Oh, no, no. Um, is it indoors, chiefly? No. No, I wouldn't think so. Four down and six to go, Mr. K. Has this anything to do with uh, law enforcement? Yes. In a way, yes. In yeah? A way. In a way, yes. yes. Oh, well, a lady okay. cop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, do you, uh, well, what I'm trying to say is, are you connected with the courts? No, not, no. not as a direct connection. Five down no. and five to go, Miss Francis. But you do do your work outside. Yes. Uh, would it be within the realm of possibility that you could arrest somebody? No. That would make it six down and four to go, Mr. Zerf. Oh, is there, is there, then there is no vehicle connected with your job. I, yes. I, there is a vehicle, yes. Yes, there is a vehicle. There is no well, vehicle. No, he said then there no, is no. I get a no. I, Wait a minute. I, you I'm get a no. That's I get right. a no. Yeah. Six negatives plus a seventh makes well. Seven down oh, and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a vehicle connected with law enforcement? Big thing? A vehicle connected with law enforcement. It is use, utilized. It's used, yes, mm -hmm. it's used for them. Can more than two people ride in it? Yes. Would it ever have prisoners in it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think so. Eight down and two to go. Mr. K, you got time for one question. Oh. All right, you got an idea, Miss Francis? You want to have a no, conference? No, let, let, uh, let uh, Stubby start. Uh, has it anything to do with animals? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh Can I take a wild guess? Quick. Lady dog catcher. Right. Good. <laughs> 
Wallace uh, Burr. Uh, uh. <laughs> that's that dog. Wallace Burr is, I think, one of the municipalities you yes. served, the Glass Wallace City. Burr, served yeah. many of them. Thank Wallace you very City. much. Thanks. We gave him a lot of trouble anyway, and thanks a Thank lot for being our guest. Nice to have you with us. And now, before our panel says goodnight, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. And one word of welcome to KFEQ-TV in St. Joseph, Missouri, who joined us tonight. We hope yeah. that you stay with the family and enjoy our Sunday meeting. And until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Clyde. Clyde. <laughs> Stubby, you were wonderful in the show, and you really, it's a big success. I love it. You Thank were wonderful. you. Wonderful. Great tonight, too. Thanks, Good night, Stubby. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Stubby. Thanks for being with us. Good night, Bennett. Good night, John. Good night, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What? My life. <laughs> Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's great new television program, Gunsmoke, Saturday night on this same network.